In this video, I'll be building a 4-inch bore vacuum cannon. This sort of cannon can fire large projectiles at high speed and requires no explosive fuel or compressed air tanks to do so. Instead, the weight of Earth's own atmosphere is the force responsible for accelerating the projectile. With a vacuum pulled inside the cannon, breaking a seal on one end is like blowing the hatch on a submarine while it's still underwater. Air explosively fills the barrel, pushing any object in its way until the momentum of those objects is great enough to punch through the far end. Because there is no valve or combustion chamber required, the design of a vacuum cannon can be very simplistic. Mine will be made from a 10-foot long, 4-inch diameter section of PVC pipe. After covering a portion of the ends so that there will be a nice clean surface that I can later make a seal against, I gave the pipe a coat of paint. Toward one end, I then drilled two holes, just barely large enough to thread in brass fittings for attaching vacuum lines. One nice thing about working with PVC is that it's soft enough for metal threads to carve their way through the plastic, which usually results in a perfect seal, with no need for a tap and die kit. To keep the cannon from rolling around, I threw together a simple wood base made from a 2x4, and I drilled holes along the length of this base for tethers to be inserted that will secure the cannon. The stand also got a paint job, and large zip ties threaded through the holes will work as the tethers. With the cannon now secured, I can expose the ends. For this piece of pipe to properly hold a vacuum, the edges of the cut need to be rounded over and sanded very smooth. A vacuum cannon uses what is called a burst disc on both ends. In this case, the discs are made of four layers of heavy aluminum foil, pressed with a coupling over the end of the pipe to properly form them into shape. The coupling is only temporary to help pull the foil tight and fold the edges over. To hold the burst discs in place while the cannon is used, the foil is secured with duct tape. You may be wondering why I used two brass fittings to attach vacuum lines. Only one line is necessary to suck out all of the air, but because this cannon is so large, I wanted to use two different pumps to make the process faster. One is an inexpensive electric vacuum pump that I purchased online, and the other is a high volume manual vacuum pump that I designed and built myself several years ago. I'll link to that video in the description below. My first tests with this cannon were with no projectile loaded, as this is the largest I've ever made, and I was a little nervous about how powerful it might be. Test 1 used only a single layer of foil as the burst disc, and you're about to see why that was a bad idea. The foil could not withstand the pressure, and the cannon fired on its own. Even when using the proper amount of foil, it's important to never stand in front of or directly behind a vacuum cannon that is under pressure. It doesn't take much for a burst disc to rupture by accident. A few tests later, and I moved on to solid projectiles. A 3-inch PVC end cap is nearly a perfect fit inside the 4-inch cannon, and it should fly like a bullet. With 30 inches of mercury being the maximum possible vacuum, I found that anything higher than 22 inches would allow the cannon to fire. Of course, the closer you get to 30, the more powerful it will be. Very lightweight projectiles can nearly be accelerated to the speed of sound. Watermelons tend to be a very satisfying target, so I decided to see what sort of damage this cannon could put out. Unfortunately, this slow-mo shot was obscured by cornstarch that I forgot to clean out of the cannon after filming the intro of this video, but the next shot turned out better. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I especially want to thank my Patreon supporters who have helped with the cost of these projects. If you enjoy my videos and can afford to support them on Patreon, please do. The less I have to rely on sponsors and other forms of fundraising, the more I'll be freed up to focus on the videos themselves. Remember to click the bell to subscribe to email updates when I post new videos, and thanks for watching.